So what is your return on this moment right now? Hi, welcome to the pantry. So we all have in excess of about 1400 minutes a day to get things accomplished, but why does it seem people get so much more done with their time? Well, chances are they're employing some techniques that help them decide on each and every moment, each and every email they open, each and every Facebook post they read, perhaps each and every trip down the stairs to get a cup of coffee. They're deciding deliberately how to spend each moment of their day and chances are they're using tips from one of my favorite books, The Five Choices. So we're going to dive into this book from Franklin Covey about how to decide how to spend each moment of your day and hopefully start to increase your productivity. So let's launch right into it. As you've experienced, information and decision making is coming at us every moment of the day and it can tend to lead to a lot of distracted time and a lot of unproductive time. When we're faced with managing our time, there are questions that we can ask ourselves that will help us shape how we want to spend our time and our energy. Decision number one, act on the important, not the urgent. Now the book has this amazing graphic about how you can place each and every moment of your day in one of these four quadrants. Quadrant number one is quadrant of necessity. That's where um, it's a lot of those last minute uh, emergencies, uh, crises that come up, um, unforeseen events. Those are things that are, they're important and they are urgent, um, but not necessarily leading to productivity. Quadrant number two, that's the quadrant we wanna be in. That's where we're at our most productive. Um, so it's not urgent that we complete these tasks, but yet they are very important. So when you hear people talking about strategic thinking, that's what's happening is they're putting their time into quadrant number two. Quadrant number three is distraction. Um, this is email to a T. So we've got not urgent, not important emails sucking up a lot of our day. Um, even the phone calls that are flooding in, that's something that you would put in Q3. So it does need to get done, but it doesn't need to get done right now. And it is distracting us from the strategic thinking at hand. Quadrant number four, waste. This is what they term the excessive relaxation quadrant. So excessive amounts of time in front of the TV, uh, excessive gaming, uh, the blindless scrolling through Facebook and other social media channels. If we spend too much time in Q4 or the waste quadrant, we're really draining our energy and our brain power to, to tackle the things that are in Q2 where we want to spend our time or even in Q3 where we sometimes have to spend our time uh, to get all of those emergencies out of the way. So we want to limit our time in Q4. So as I mentioned, Q2, that's our excessive productivity quadrant. That's where we want to spend our time. So the activities you're going to find here are those that lend themselves to relationship building. So spending time with friends and family and helping to charge your batteries. Uh, it's also where you do your learning and renewal. So hopefully you'll put this video in your Q2 today. Um, we're also doing our strategic thinking, our creative thinking, our planning. Um, this is where hopefully your phone is turned off, your emails are turned off, and you're able to really sit down and think about your project and create some, some valuable content for that project. Choice number two is decision management. Now this is a fancy term for essentially defining your life's roles and creating action items around this role. This is the one I struggle with the most and, and for the next year I'm going to, to plan to do this better. But it's looking at all the roles that you serve in your life, be it as a mother, a spouse, uh, a colleague, a, an, a boss, or an employee, and creating action statements around that role. So for example, I'm a mom of two very active boys uh, in athletics. And so my role for them is to be their biggest cheerleader, their biggest fan. Now I need to decide how to create action items that, that support that role. So for example, driving them to their games and practices, 
watching their games and practices, perhaps even volunteering with their sports teams. Those are great uses of my time because uh, I'm supporting them in their activities and I'm supporting the role that I am playing in their lives. You may find decision management is one of the tougher ones for you. So perhaps we'll come back to that in a future blog post, but let's launch into choice number three. Choice number three is around attention management, scheduling big rocks, don't sort the gravel. I love this choice. Basically big rocks are defined as those important things that you should get done and you should schedule them and put them in your calendar rather than sorting through all the little rocks and gravel, which includes answering emails um, as soon as they pop up on your computer. This also tends to be the one that's easier said than done. It's easier to say, yes, I'm going to put two hours aside to work on my blog today, uh, rather than respond to a bunch of emails that are coming in from uh, clients and suppliers. But in order for me to produce the blog and stay on top of my blog, I need to put that time in my calendar and I can sort through that gravel in an hour. It's still going to be there. Uh, it's not urgent and I can tend to it when I'm able and, and perhaps even have a little bit more energy because now I've tended to the big rocks in my schedule. Choice number four also deals with attention management. Don't let your technology rule you. You need to rule your technology. I think this is a tough one for all of us because we have so many technology distractions in our lives, whether it's our computers or our phones. Um, but we really need to manage what's coming in and, and sort through the important things again. So for example, turning off notifications is a great way to eliminate distractions. If you're not sure how much time you're spending on your phone or your email or even on social media, I would recommend even timing yourself each day to see how much time you're spending on a certain application uh, and add it up over a month and see how much time you are indeed potentially wasting um, uh, attending to those social media platforms. Of course, unless you're on uh, the Productivity Pantry's Facebook page, spend as much time there as you want because um, hopefully it's helping you with the other areas of your life. And finally, choice number five, which is about your energy, fuel your fire and don't burn out. This is where we want to make sure we're eating right, we're exercising, we're scheduling our workouts and exercise, um, and scheduling those relaxation activities that recharge our batteries. This is also where you're connecting with your family and friends. They can recharge your batteries and better equip you to tackle uh, the bigger tasks and the more strategic tasks that lie ahead. So those are the simple strategies of the five choices. Again, take a read of this book. It's an easy read, um, but so effective. Uh, I read this book all the time uh, and refer to the strategies in there. I'll also be highlighting some of these five choices on my newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please go over to productivitypantry.com and sign up for the newsletter there. And you'll see some tangible ways that you can implement the five choices in your life. By mastering these choices, not only will your productivity increase, but also your well-being and your relationships with others. We have only but one life to live, so let's get out there and make the most of it. Enjoy the book, enjoy this blog, and have yourself a great week. Bye for now.